Charles Klein, or Charlie as friends call him, doesn't like war. War is senseless and a horror, and you can't imagine what it's life like until you go through it. And I wouldn't want to see anybody involved in it again. His accent still gives away his New Jersey roots, although he's called North Carolina home since the 1980s, and a stroke has slurred it some. But from 1943 to 1946, Charlie served as a torpedo bomber, flying missions over the South Pacific in World War II from an aircraft carrier, narrowly escaping fate early one morning in 1944. I was the second plane to take off on a submarine patrol at 4 o'clock in the morning when the catapult malfunctioned and I wound up in the water at 4 o'clock. <laughs> I laughed the whole time I was in the water. I just couldn't believe this was happening to me. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Something else he's never been able to forget, and the only thing about the war he didn't mind is the feeling of flying. Now in his mid-80s, the same stroke that affected his speech also paralyzed his right side, ending all hope of ever piloting a plane again. Still, every day since his last flight 40 years ago, he's dreamt of at least riding in a plane. Thanks to the nursing home where he lives, it was a dream that would soon become a reality. We came up with the idea of granting a wish for the residents. Um, and in talking with um, Charlie Klein, um, he, he likes to talk about his memories of the war. And, you know, we thought, well, why not send him back up in the air? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I still can't believe it. That's beyond my comprehension. I never thought I'd see the wild blue yonder again. Oh. Today, Charlie lives at Wilkes Senior Village in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. The staff there got in touch with Wilkes Regional Airport and found fellow veteran Ed Mulholland, who was more than happy to take Charlie back up again. Pilots remember being up there with the clouds. Uh, and normally, a ground person doesn't get to see that except as a fog bank, you know. But to be up there and be around another object that's just sitting out there like a cloud, uh, that's kind of special, or be on top of it. I believe we're a go there, Charlie. Yep. That's all right with me. There's nothing. The air and seeing the clouds and flying and you in another world. There were a few sights he wanted to see. The Brushy Mountains and especially Kerscott Lake. Now you can see the dam there for the reservoir, Kerscott. And my wife's ashes are spread out in the fields over there. But what he wasn't prepared for were the dozens of school children waiting to pay tribute to the brave veteran during a planned flyover of Mountain View Elementary in Wilkesboro. Look at them all lined up out there, right off the wingtip. I saw them all. Uh, <laughs> made me feel like the president. <laughs> you would see people waving and saluting to him and just singing the national anthem. It was um, fun doing that and help and seeing them fly over to our school. It was fun. But not near as much fun as it was for Charlie. It went great and I'm ready to go again. <laughs> Mr. Mulholland said, I got to pay for the gas if I go again. <laughs> so I said, yeah, you got a deal. I think his day went better than he would ever have imagined, and it could not have been choreographed or written to be a more perfect day for him, for the weather, for his memories, and for his experiences. People are worried that the generations that have followed Charlie may not fully understand the importance of the sacrifices veterans like him made. Fortunately, his friends in Wilkes County certainly do. We wrote s stories about them saving our country and helping us. They let the people that was bad stay there and not let them come here to us. And for this veteran, on this day, he couldn't feel more appreciated. That made my day, made my year, made my whole lifetime. It brought back memories and, oh boy, 
There's nothing like flying.